Authorities are investigating after a helicopter crashed in Houston, killing four people on board and destroying a radio tower. Mayor John Whitmire says the helicopter went down just before 8 p.m. Sunday. He says it took off from Ellington Field, but he didn't know its destination. The identities of the victims and their ages have not been released, but officials say one was a child. The National Transportation Safety Board says it is investigating the crash of the Robinson R-44-2 helicopter. Houston Police Chief J. No Diaz says the private helicopter with four people on board either struck a cable or the tower. He says there was no one on the ground in the area when the crash occurred. Seven fifty-four this afternoon, Station 17, Houston Fire, heard a loud explosion. Immediately 911 was lighting up, and uh, obviously large explosion, fireball out of the air, and Houston's first responders went into action. The residents are secure and safe, but we have a terrible accident scene. Multiple fatalities, power, helicopter destroyed. Let me just emphasize that the scene is secure, multiple fatalities, apparently there's a child, and it's a horrible thing to witness. Uh, so when it hit, when it hit the, the... the first responders, Houston Fire, literally a block away where the first responders knew they had a tragic scene on their hands, and now the DPS, the federal government, Houston Fire Police are doing their job. The windshield to the helicopter over there. There is some outage of power to residents near the scene. We are fortunate that it wasn't worse in terms of there's a butane tank, gas tank near the crash scene. Hitting the tower, the tower crumbling, and then the field erupting in flames, right? Oh. Well, at first I was fucking my dog. And, well, I didn't see everything. I just saw, like, I heard the sound of the helicopter just crash. But at first I thought it was, you know, a power line that exploded because you could see the white light after it exploded. For the first time, a group of Russian deserters have been allowed to stay in a European Union country. French authorities have granted temporary residence permits to six Russian deserters who fled the war in Ukraine. The Russians had no travel documents or passports. The British publication The Guardian reports this. The Russians are currently living in France while their application for political asylum is being considered. For the first time, an EU country has let in a group of deserters who had no travel documents or foreign passports. The Guardian quotes Ivan Chuvilev, press secretary for the group assisting Russian deserters, as saying, the organization helps Russian soldiers avoid military service, and it was this organization that helped the Russians this time. According to Chuvilev, France's decision to accept the Russians could encourage other Russian soldiers to desert, as well as create a precedent from the point of view of other Western countries. France's decision is the result of broad cooperation between the French authorities and the group of human rights organizations. We hope that this marks the beginning of more deserters being allowed into Europe, Chuvilev noted. It is known that Chuvilev's organization has already helped more than 2,000 Russian soldiers escape abroad. Among them are those who have already fought in Ukraine, as well as conscripts and officers who managed to escape before being sent to the front. All six Russian soldiers arrived in Paris on separate flights in recent months after fleeing Russia for Kazakhstan in 2022 and 2023. 
Unable to travel to Europe and facing the prospect of long-term imprisonment at home, most deserters fled to countries bordering Russia, such as Armenia and Kazakhstan, where they could enter without a passport but remained trapped, without an option to travel onward. Moscow has gone to great lengths to track them down. There has been a growing number of incidents where deserters hiding in post-Soviet countries within reach of the Kremlin have been kidnapped or deported back to Russia. Their precarious situation has prompted louder calls for anti-war activists to provide soldiers with a safe haven by allowing them to seek refuge in the West. Since Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, almost 7,400 soldiers have been tried in military courts for going AWOL and the number of cases rises each month Russian independent media site Mediazona reported in April. This figure is thought to be a fraction of the total number of deserters, never mind those who want to desert but are too afraid 